सो लेट्स टेक लुक एट सम इम्पॉर्टेंट ऑब्जेक्टिव क्वेश्चन रिगार्डिंग स्ट्रक्चरल स्टीन एंड इट्स प्रॉपर्टीज एंड द सब्जेक्ट वी विल बी लुकिंग एट इज डिजाइन ऑफ स्टील स्ट्रक्चर ओके लेट्स मो टू द क्वेश्चन सो कोल्ड वर्किंग ऑन स्टील एन्श्युअर्स ओके फाइन फिनिशिंग ऑफ द मेम्बर येस कोल्ड वर्किंग डज एन्श्युअर अ फाइन फिनिश देन लाइफ स्पैन ऑफ द मेम्बर इंक्रीजेस बिकॉज इट इम्प्रूव द स्ट्रक्चरल प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ द स्टील मेंबर दैट्स वाई ऑप्शन बी इज ऑल्सो राइट देन इम्प्रूव येल्ड स्ट्रेस ऑफ द मेंबर येस कोल्ड वर्किंग डज इम्प्रूव येल्ड स्ट्रेस ऑफ द मेंबर देर फोर द ऑप्शन वी विल बी गोइंग विथ इज ऑल ऑफ द अब नो लेट्स टेक अ लुक एट एक्सप्लेनेशन बिहाइंड दिस क्वेश्चन सी कोल्ड वर्किंग मीन्स वर्किंग बिलो इट्स रिक्रिस्टलाइजेशन टेम्परेचर ओके वॉट एवर द रिक्रिस्टलाइजेशन टेम्परेचर ऑफ मीन्स अरेंजमेंट ऑफ द ग्रेन टेक्स प्लेस वेन यू वर्क द स्टील वर्क अपॉन द स्टील ओके आइदर यू कैन हॉट वर्क और यू कैन कोल्ड वर्क कोल्ड वर्किंग मीन्स वर्किंग एट अ टेम्परेचर विच इज बिलो द रिक्रिस्टलाइजेशन दैट इज बिलो द रीअरेंजमेंट टेम्परेचर ऑफ द स्टील ओके इट एम्प्रूव स्ट्रेंथ एंड हार्डनेस प्रॉपर्टीज then the finish that we obtain after cold working is smoother the surface finish is very fine all right now yield strength also increase because the grain get arranged themselves in a very proper manner that's why yield strength of the steel member also increase when you are working cold and the dimension of the member obtained after working after hammering forging the member in the die in that cast the dimensions that are obtained are very appropriate very correct very precise that's why better dimensional tolerance is also obtained so these are the advantages of cold working on steel okay cold working ensures strength and hardness property it ensures smoother and finer finishes it improves the yield strength also it ensures better dimensional tolerance okay so question number 2 is saying steel is designated as fe410 or fe250 or fe540 where fe stands for fill in the blank and the number of prefix stands for fill in the blank okay the designation for example let's say fe and some xyz number is given fe stands for ferrous material that is steel and the number designation after the word prefix okay this suffix stands for the characteristic ultimate strength in megapascal okay for example we are having the same example fe stands for ferrous material which is steel here we are talking about steel member that's why it will be steel and 250 stands for characteristic ultimate strength in megapascal मेगा पास्कल मीन्स न्यूटन पर एम एम स्क्वेर ओके एफ ई स्टैंड फॉर स्टील एंड टू फिफ्टी स्टैंड फॉर अल्टीमेट और फोर फिफ्टी और फाइव फोर्टी स्टैंड फॉर अल्टीमेट टेंसाइल स्ट्रेंथ इन मेगा पास्कल ओके वन ऑफ द इम्पॉर्टेंट प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ द स्टील इज इट्स डक्टिलिटी बिकॉज ऑप्शन ए सिंग इट एंश्योर्स वॉर्निंग बिफोर कोलैप्स ऑफ द स्ट्रक्चर येस a ductile member will undergo elongation it will not break directly because the ductility means the property in which whenever you are applying tensile or deforming force the member will get elongated the member will go shape out before it breaks therefore it does ensure a warning before the total collapse of the structure then ductility redistribute load from the critical section yes while getting elongated by the property of ductility the section will redistribute the load on the elongated section it will take the load from critical section and it will redistribute it thereby reducing the stress on that critical section okay then ductility ensures safety of the structure in earthquake and fire yes when earthquake shock waves are coming the ductile member will absorb it is going to dissipate the earthquake forces earthquake shock waves okay also it bears the it resists the fire deformation that's why the option we will go with all of the above okay c ductility causes energy dissipation of earthquake wave then 
load at critical point is distributed again on various point in order to ensure safety of the structure steel does it automatically okay then ductility does show warning sign of structure's failure opposite to that of brittle material for example if you make a structure totally in concrete by not making use of any steel member in it and when the concrete fails it directly breaks it does not give any prior warning to the user that he has to make the structure vacant he has to leave the structure on the other hand steel will undergo ductile deformation thereby the user is going to understand the structure is going to fail thereby he can vacant the means he can abandon the structure he can go to a safer place all right this is how ductility in steel structure plays this important role then e of structural steel is fill in the blank and g is fill in the blank okay we are talking about modulus of elasticity or young's modulus and modulus of rigidity here okay remember it it is standard 2 into 10 to the power of 5 mpa is modulus of elasticity and 0.769 into 10 to the power of 5 mega pascal is modulus of rigidity okay now along with these two values let's take a look at all the properties parameters of structural steel okay see we just saw e is is modulus of elasticity and the value is 2 into 10 to the power of 5 mega pascal modulus of rigidity g is 0.769 into 10 to the power of 5 mega pascal then coefficient of thermal expansion which is alpha how much the material expands by providing heat okay the coefficient is 0.12 into 10 to the power minus 6 per degree celsius okay then brinell's and rockwell hardness number range from 150 to 190 and 157 to 190 respectively poisson's ratio mu okay for elastic range it is 0.3 and for plastic range mu is 0.5 for steel then unit mass of steel is 7850 kg per cubic meter or meter cube melting point is approximately 1530 degree celsius for structural steel okay let's move to question number next then match the pairs we are provided with some parameters such as cross sectional area is there section modulus is there and radius of gyration is there okay for when we are looking at proper dimension of cross sectional area we are looking at what amount of resistance to tension or compression is required okay means whenever we are looking at cross sectional area whenever we are focusing at cross sectional area of steel structure then we are focusing on its resistance toward tension or compression stress which is which will be acting upon it okay then we do look for whatever the section modulus we desire in the steel member is the resistance to bending and shearing stresses okay we will look for the proper value of section modulus when we will be desiring the proper resistance to bending and shearing okay then when we are focusing on radius radius of gyration then we are looking at resistance to buckling therefore roman 1 stands for point number 2 then roman 2 stands for point number 3 roman 3 stands for point number 1 therefore option b is the correct one okay let's have a detailed look at this parameters and the desired properties see when we are talking about cross sectional area how much the cross sectional area of the member should be then we are talking about resistance to tension or resistance to compression okay we will be looking at resistance to tension or compression when we are desiring to use the member as a beam or column okay as a beam it will be in tension it will be in flexure okay and in column state in strut state the member is going to get stress with compressive stresses then section modulus means we are looking at resistance to bending and shearing okay for section modulus the property is resistance to bending and shearing and when we are talking about radius of gyration 
or let's say slenderness ratio we will be focusing on this property when we want proper resistance to buckling okay let's move to question number next advantages of using steel as a structural member is high strength yes strength of steel member is high as we are comparing it to concrete we have better strength in steel member for the same weight prefabrication yes these members can be easily prefabricated in an industry then fire resistance see this property this is not advantage of a steel structure steel structure although it doesn't burn because of fire but the property such as strength is there ductility is there they do deteriorate because of fire attack that's why point number 3 is not advantage here then easy assembling and disassembling yes this can be advantage because a prefabricated pre-made steel structure member can be transported to the site can be assembled easily and can be disassembled easily therefore point number 4 is all right therefore the option we should look for is option b 1 2 and 4 okay now let's take a detailed look at what are the whatever the points we have mentioned in the options see high strength strength of steel member is high it is good because strength to weight ratio when we are comparing with concrete it is 3.5 times better than concrete okay when we are comparing the strength by weight ratio of steel it is 3.5 times better than that of concrete all right then easy assembling and disassembly means we can easily join the steel members by using weld by using rivets or by using bolts we can easily join it and we can easily remove the structure we can totally dismantle the structure and even after dismantling of the structure the members are pretty useful which is not possible in case of a concrete structure when we are dismantling a concrete structure the portions that the portion or the leftover we are having after dismantling are not pretty useful they do totally go in scrap they go as wastage but it is not the case in case of steel okay now regarding prefabrication in industry we can have uniform high quality error free properly dimensioned member on a large scale okay whatever be the number whatever be the size can be perfectly made in an industry okay but regarding fire resistance the problem of steel is although it is not burning but it is going to lose all its desired properties because of fire okay let's go to question number next so this question is saying durability of property durability property of steel aims toward its do we aim the durability property of steel toward resistance to breakage yes we do do we consider resistance to corrosion in durability no do we consider resistance to fire no thereby all of the option all of the above option is getting ruled out here so let's take a detailed look at this see when we are talking about durability we are talking about its resistance to breakage under excess deformation okay durability does consist of the property such as ductility okay it will not break directly under excess deformation for example a member is there and if we are continuously loading it then it will go shape out first then even if we continue loading it it will undergo ductile deformation okay then and only then it is going to break okay even under excess deformation it won't first break but it will undergo some shape changes okay it will not directly deform it will undergo some changes then it will start deforming and even after excess horrible deformation it will not break directly okay therefore durability aims toward resistance to breakage under excess deformation now the point corrosion steel is highly prone to corrosion from air from water from moisture that's why periodic maintenance is necessary what we do there we coat the steel with zinc or a material which is having its rank over or upper than or more than the steel okay it will the paint coat is going to get corroded prior to steel that's why it will act as a protective material for steel okay therefore whatever the attack of moisture or air on the steel is there it will be burdened 
on the anti corrosive paint over there okay then regarding fire we have established this point steel although it is not burning because of fire but the desired properties of steel are lost because of exposure to fire under fire attack okay means durability does consider ductility but not corrosion or fire resistance then following are the example of tension member compression member and flexural member respectively okay and we have to choose from the option which one is tension which one is compression and which one is flexural member see suspension cable for example the suspension bridge we talk about okay this specific cable is what uh, for example this is the main pier okay and this is the deck this suspension cable is a tension member all right and option a b c are having suspension cable whereas for option d let's rule it out okay now we have to choose from option a b and c then compression member compression member means nothing but a column member or which is called as a strut okay therefore option a and option b are still in the scene let's cut option c here now flexural member flexural member means beam member okay horizontal member which will be stress with bending stresses okay therefore option b gets ruled out here therefore by the elimination method we are find we have found out the correct answer is option a okay tension member is suspension cable compression member is strut or column flexural member is beam okay c tension member here is suspension cable can be there or truss tension member may be there a specific member in truss which is undergoing tension is will be a tension member then compression member may be a strut okay vertical member which will be loaded at the center or eccentrically it will be what a compression member or a column will be there okay this can be a strut or a column then flexural member horizontal member okay whose longitudinal dimension dominant dimension will be put to some loading is what a flexural member bending stresses will be acting upon this flexural member a beam can be there or a joist can be there see joist is nothing but a beam or just a secondary beam okay joists are used in floor okay in floor the secondary beams are known as joist okay so that was all regarding structural properties of the structural steel that we are going to use in design of steel structure for more such videos do subscribe simplified learning if you like the video please press thumbs up comment below the video and share amongst your friend till then take care bye